going into the second classroom on the left-hand side. So um, you're going to go with Mr. Alex, and I'm going to say it, Ruling? Yes. Ruling. Mr. Alex Ruling, and he's going to give a talk to the young men. Gentlemen, as you go, could you kind of, let's move, let me move the trash can along the path to the thing and, and just dump your trash as you go. And then young ladies, I'm going to ask that you, after the boys go, get up and quickly put your trash in the trash can and then everyone sit so that they're facing this way so that you can hear Mrs. Courtney Ruling and her wonderful daughter, Gianna. Gianna. Oh. Great <laughs> <laughs> All the Catholic moms in the room. <laughs> All right, so we're going to head out now for our next talk. So, gentlemen, if you could please get up and see Mrs. Curley over there, follow her down to the classroom. High school. Bethany was my youth minister, so it was a great, great, great time to be here. Um, I went to college at Catholic University. That's where I met my husband, who you just met. Um, graduated in May of 2016. Then here comes the fun part. Got married in December of 2017. We got our crazy puppy in October 2018. We had Gianna in December of 2019. And number two, as you can plainly see, is due next month. So it's been a whirlwind. But it's been a great one. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of challenges, learned a lot, and wouldn't trade a second of it for anything. So but I'm here today to talk to you guys about what it's like living your faith just day to day. You know, what is it like to live your faith now in your current state? What's it like when you're dating somebody? What's it like when you're married and you have these guys? You know, it's different at every stage. So I remember sitting exactly where you are when I was being engaged and I was going to get confirmed and I was all excited. I was getting all the fruits and the gifts and the graces. Um, but I didn't really understand all that or really feel the effects of it until I went to college, right? So when I was in high school, you know, I went to mass on Sundays with my family. I went to youth group on the weekends. 
Um, what else did we do? Got up at 6.30 in the morning for the Holy Days of Obligation. Now that talk about a sacrifice and living your faith. I'm not a morning person, so that was hard. Um, but, you know, we do stuff like that. Um, come Lent, you know, Lent's a great time to talk about living your faith. You know, those small sacrifices we offer up with chocolate or meat on Fridays, those are great ways that we can show our faith to those around us, right? I'm sure all of you have friends who are Catholic and not Catholic. I'm sure you guys face challenges in school with your teachers, your friends. Things you hear on TV, on the radio, all kinds of stuff, right? And it's contrary to what you hear when you come to Mass, when you come to youth group, when you come to the retreat, right? And that can be hard. Um, but by sticking to those little things that we've offered up, you know, we're showing the world just a little bit about what we do on a day to day basis. So I was going somewhere with that and fully just derailed myself. Um, oh, living your head, thank you. So, in your current state, like I said, you're going to get all these graces, right? They're going to help you do stuff in your day-to-day -day life. But when you get older, like I said, when I got to college, that's when things really clicked for me. So we're going to go back to dating, right? I didn't really date a whole lot in high school. Really wasn't my thing. Um, but I will say, my prom date is now one of my husband's best friends. I'm best friends with his wife. We both had daughters. Um, and we talk all the time. So, you know, things happen, right? But when I got to college, I was like, okay, I can really feel the pull from my vocation. I know I want to be married. I want to find a Catholic man. I want to find someone who's all in on this faith. You know, I grew up in a household of two, you know, parents of two religions. Hi, sweetheart. Two religions, and that's hard. So I knew that I wanted to find someone who was all in on this faith, who could be my partner, who team together to raise these little guys in the faith and be good citizens of heaven with him. Yes, okay, you can go for it. So let me stop there and ask you guys, what do you guys think the purpose of dating is? Shout it out for your masks. Anybody need takers? No? No volunteers? So the purpose of dating is to find your spouse, right? So it's not necessarily some big dramatic thing that you see on TV and the sitcoms and it's heartbreaking and it's oh my gosh and it's just drama, drama, drama. There is some drama. There is. But you know, when you're dating as a Catholic, you're dating to find your spouse. So like I said, when I got to college, I was like, okay, this is now this time that I'm entering into my life, that I'm open to this, I'm open to dating. And I did. I went on a couple dates, even kind of sort of dated someone long distance for like a hot second. Didn't work out. Nothing seemed right. You know, halfway through, I guess it was halfway through college, I had that, you know, that dramatic breakdown with my mom. And I was crying on the phone, and I was like, mom. This guy I like doesn't even notice me. This is awful. Oh, I hate all this. It's like I'm never bless you. It's like I'm never getting this point. Well then, you know, I got myself together, I pulled my, my thoughts together, and I prayed about it. You know, I'd heard people talk about saying novenas for their future spouse or praying the rosary daily for them, things like that, but I'd never tried it, right? So I sat down and I said, Lord Jesus, if you have somebody for me, send them to me in your time. I'll be patient, I promise, really don't try to be, but send them to me in your time. A month after that, the man you just met <laughs> came walking into my life, and now we have two kids and a great dog, and life is great, right? So, thank you, do for being Right? So sometimes you just really have to relinquish that. You talk about really living your faith, you have to let go sometimes of what's going on in your life and really surrender it to. To Christ, you know, talk about the saints, um, I'll learn from their examples, you know, and my faith that worked out really well. But, you know, that doesn't mean that everything was easy, right? It's still hard. We still have challenges that we face, right? But living our faith is an active challenge every single day. So, how do we incorporate our faith into our daily life, right? You know, I talked about some of the stuff that I've done in high school gone to Mass, the Sunday on the holidays, the youth group, soup suppers, all the fun stuff, right? You lay that foundation early and then you keep building on it. So now that I kind of had an idea of what I'd have in my own life, how do I couple that with my husband? Right? We started going to mass together on Sundays. We made it a priority to always go to mass together. I was a division three athlete. I played the first two years, I played varsity softball and my schedule was not my own. But we still found a way every Sunday, be it okay, we went to mass first thing in the morning or maybe we went at night. We found a way to go together because we knew that that was going to be a cornerstone of our relationship. We talked 
you know, we shared our thoughts and our ideas about, okay, what do we want our family to look like one day? How many kids do we want? You know, how do we want to raise them in faith? Um, you know, what do we want to teach them at certain ages? You know, start having those conversations. Remember, you're dating to find your spouse. You're dating to find someone who's going to be with you through the thick and the thin and through kids and through all the craziness, right? So talk, communicate. That was a big thing that we did. Also, frequent the sacrament of confession. So when I was growing up, I was like the every six month or right? Get in the confessional and I'd go, bless my father for I Hexen. It's been, um, I don't know how long since my last confession, right? When I got to college though, and I had the sacraments there, Remember I said I went to the Catholic University of America. If you've been there, you've seen that giant building. We used to call it the guilt trip to remind us to go. Um, you know, we have confession available all the time. And that is such an amazing, amazing sacrament. And you guys are about to go get an amazing sacrament. And you're going to be gifted with all these beautiful fruits and graces. right? And the best way to let those guys flourish is to go to confession. Keep your souls clean. Give the Holy Spirit a beautiful slate to work off of. right? So we did that as a couple. We'd stand there in line and we'd wait together and then you know that we could walk around or chit chat or go to lunch or whatnot. But it became a part of our daily, not daily, I'm sorry, it became a part of our like monthly routine. And it still is. So we like to find parishes around us. Um, and that can be hard because if you've ever tried to find a good confession slot, um, they're always on like a random like, you know, 3.30 on a Saturday or every other Thursday or, you know, it's hard, right? But we make it a point even now, like we do when we're dating, to go to those sacraments together. Do that stuff together. Like we said, we graduated, got engaged, right? So the next step we did is we added in night prayer together. So if you're familiar with the Liturgy of the Hours, right, this is the next best prayer to going to Mass every day. So my husband gets up in the morning now, and he says all the morning stuff. But when we were dating and we were engaged, we'd call each other at night. When we were engaged, I was living with my mom at home, and he was living in D.C. So we'd call each other every night, we'd pull it up on our phones, which is every free night care. And I'm not going to lie, I did fall asleep a time or two. He fell asleep a time or two, and you'd sit there and go, hello, hello, are you awake, are you there? But it really helped lay that foundation for what we were going to do in marriage. Now, every night we say it, and if we don't say it, it's weird. So, again, start those foundations early, and then you bring them with you as you go. I think of what else we did. Um, those are kind of the big ones. Then we got married. Okay, great time. Marriage is an amazing sacrament because it's the one that you give each other. Okay, remember again, you're dating to find your spouse. You're dating to find someone who's going to be with you long term. So you enter into this sacrament and you're going to fully give yourself. There's no holding back when it comes to marriage. There's no like have these like takes back. No. Once you're in, you're in. Okay. Kind of like your perfect little segment that you put in and things, you get out of things you put into it, right? That's how marriage is. So we gave each other the gift of the sacrament, and you have all these wonderful graces that come with it, right? But again, you build those foundations ahead of time. And you know, when we were getting um, prepped for marriage, right, we had a lot of hard that happened. My husband's best friend died suddenly. You know, we had crazy challenges to overcome while we were getting prepared for marriage. Um, but you know, we made it, we got there. And like I said, those graces that come from marriage really help you tackle those challenges. It's not easy, right? You face maybe challenges with money or family members or, you know, maybe someone gets sick, or whatnot. But because of the graces you have, I believe, because of the graces you have, it allows you to overcome that, right? So now what do we do? We still pray night prayer every single night. We go to confession once a month. In the mornings, again, my husband's a morning person. I'm still not a morning person. Even after having kids, I'm not a morning person. He gets up and he says morning prayer. He'll say his rosary, and then he'll read the mass readings for the day. I try to start saying my rosary walking the dog in the afternoon. And then we'll just chat about it, okay? How do we do for the day? We've been listening to Father Mike's Five One a Year podcast, and we sit there at night and we talk about it all the time. It's like, oh, what did Father Mike say today? Oh, this is so cool. We dissect it, right? And then the most important thing that we do is we pass on our faith to our kiddo, right? She is a great way for us to become better in our faith. And so is this little guy right here because we have to teach them from a very young age. Faith is the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. She just learned amen this week. It was really big. Big deal. Usually, she probably won't do it now, but usually if there's a crucifix in the room, we say, where's Jesus? 
and she looks and she points, and it's so sweet and it's so innocent to see how just these little bits of our faith that we take for granted every single day are so amazing and wondrous to these children, right? So that's our job now. You know, as a, as a married person, our main job for each other is to get each other to heaven, right? We do that by living out our faith. We do that by surrounding ourselves with, with friends who are also faithful Catholics. We have the same fundamental values, but we still learn from each other. We still swap ideas about, oh, have you taught your kids this? Or have you read this? Or, oh my gosh, this faith is amazing. You know, we still we share ideas all the time that help us grow. And that's the big thing to remember when it comes to living your faith, is it's always changing, you're always growing. And it, it, it might look different, but it will look different, from where you're sitting today to when you're in my spot, right? Like I said, there were small things that I did in high school. There were things that I added in college. And then come to marriage, it's like, okay, this is success. Let's see how this really works, right? But ultimately, it's your choice, right? And again, like I said, you're going to get all these beautiful graces. And these are all the graces that you need to live in your current state right now. You know, you guys are students. You guys, I'm sure, have gone through ups and downs and craziness over the last year with COVID or learning and everything's uncertain and you know all this craziness, right? And you know, I'm sure you hear things in the news or your your friends might think one thing, you might think something different. Um, but again, holding on to your faith is so so important. It might seem impossible at times. Like when we look at the saints, they went through a lot harder stuff than we did to cling to to, cling to the faith. Um, but I can absolutely guarantee you that is seriously one of the best things. If not, you know, it is the best thing, you know, to be able to live your faith, to share it with those around you, you know, put those virtues that you're learning about into action, right? So it's kind of a little bit about me and, and my story with my husband, um, you know, but speaking as, you know, lady to a lady, right? Not easy being a Catholic woman, right? You're bombarded constantly with just all kinds of nonsense, right? There's so much fun. But as a Catholic woman, we have like all these beautiful graces that allow us to be strong. You know, I'm gonna think about it like this. We're the ones who give birth. It's not easy, it's hard, okay? You get a lot of good graces from that. Um, you know, but we set the standards. When you're looking to find someone, when you are thinking about who do I wanna spend my time with, be it friends, be it a, a, a boyfriend, be it eventually a fiance, a husband, Right. Think about the standards you're setting for yourself. Think about the standards you want them to set. When you're married, right, I'm feeling the man is the head of the house. He's your protector. He's he's the you know the guider, the guiding person for the family. And the women are definitely there, being a huge heart of the family, heart of the domestic church, right? But that starts now. That starts by setting the example for yourself of going to mass. Honoring yourself, respecting yourself, making sure that you're dressing modestly, making sure that you are holding yourself to a higher standard than what you see in the newspapers. Okay? Because my husband has told me so many times, and I thought this was the sweetest thing in the world, that when he met me and we started dating, it was my love of my faith and the way I lived my faith that made him want to live his faith. And now, in marriage, you know, I tend to be more of the talker. The, the extrovert outside the mirror person, whatever, right? And my husband is more of a follower, like, okay, let's go along with it. That sounds like a great idea. But we have to switch those roles, right? He leads our family. He leads us in prayer. He reminds us to say the rosaries every day. He reminds us to say night prayer at night. We just went through the consecration of St. Joseph, and he led us through that. Um, you know, and I follow his example. But again, that all started when we started dating, and I set the, the, the boundary lines of, like, this is what's important. It is important to me that we go to mass. It is important to me that we talk about raising our children in the faith. Um, you know, it's important to me that we we hold true to this, right? It's important that we surround ourselves with people who are going to bring us up, bring us to heaven, and not people who are just going to say, "It's fine, we can miss mass." You know, you gave a talk like for Lent, and it's Friday, you meet me. It doesn't matter. You know, no, it does matter because every little thing that you do is a building block of that foundation that gets you ultimately towards heaven, you know, more and more and more as we go. So it's really what time it is. I think I just talked a lot at you guys. Um, you know, but I I'll pause here if anyone has any questions or anything that they wanted to talk about. Um, you know, but I will say having gone through high school, middle school, high school, college, 
engagement, marriage. Um, we've been married about three years now, right? You know, I've seen a lot of challenges, right? but at the end of the day, I am more thankful every single day for my faith than anything else in my life. It is just the absolute pinnacle, right? So I know right now it might seem like, eh, whatever, I have to be here, I have to put the off, you know, I don't really want to be here, whatever, okay, fine. Um, but if you let that Holy Spirit in, if you let him give you those fruits, give you those gifts, I promise you, as you grow and as you learn more about your faith, um, they really will flourish. And it's just the most, like, incredible thing in the world. And I probably get up here and talk to you for hours and hours and hours about how much I love marriage and it's cool and it's the best and it's one of the most wonderful in the whole wide world. Um, but I'll stop here. So if you guys have any questions, you will talk about. Um, so can we get those questions? Does anybody have anything they want to talk about? Anything? Anyone had their coffee this morning? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you seem a little quiet. I don't think I'm the first one to talk to you today, right? I have a question for you, Yeah. Uh, first of all, was Alex involved in these ministries growing up and things? Like you were saying, that would be part of your story? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think he was. I know he, he did, um, he was an altar server. But I don't actually think they had the same type of youth programs that we had down here. Because so my husband's from Rochester, New York. I'm from five minutes down the road, the Rocky Run, like from like hop skip and jump away. Um, but he's from New York, and I don't think at the time they had the same programs. He was actually going to the mission church um, for most of his time in high school, I believe. But he was an altar server, so he was involved, um, but not in the same way that I was down here. So. And he definitely dated more in high school, so when he comes talk to you, I'm sure he talked to you about stuff he learned <laughs> from that. But I was a little nerd. Any other questions? Topics? Anything else we can talk about? Yeah. How did you know that there was a It's a great question. So, um, lots of prayer, honestly. And when I was your age, um, and even in high school, you know, I thought, hey, do I want to be a religious sister? I thought about it for a little while, um, but every time I thought about my vocation, I just kept back to, I want to be a mom, I want to be a wife, you know, I want to have a, a, a build that domestic church with somebody. Um, but it wasn't immediate, you know, it took me a little while, I, I said I thought about being a sister, um, but the more, the more I prayed about it, the more I was like, nope, this is, this is where I want to be. And like I said, you know, I had... I had great parents, but still seeing how difficult it was at times, having them both be different religions. And my mom was Catholic, my dad was Methodist. Um, I was in the Catholic side, one out, because here I am. Um, but I knew that I was like, you know what? No, I still feel this longing, this desire to, to be in a family again, to have my, you know, have my husband there, have my children there. Um, and ultimately, it is just like I've never, for even one day thought that I should have done anything different. So um, I think, think I'm more of this to be. But it's a great question. Hopefully this isn't too much to ask, but how did you handle challenges with security? Oh, yeah. great question. Because that is hard. <laughs> um, so like I said, um, we'll kind of backtrack a little bit. You know, when you're dating, you're dating to find yourself. So this is part of my time this morning, right? So, when you're seriously thinking about being together with someone, right, obviously the challenges of chastity will come up, right? How much time alone do we spend together? Oh, are our parents around? Oh, no, they're not. Oh, and temptation will leak its way in. It always does. When you're dating younger, right, you have to be more cautious of that because you have farther to go to get the marriage, right? Something to keep in mind. In college, you know, we were older, but we had all the freedom. We weren't living at home, right? We were living on campus. We could see each other whenever we wanted, you know, whatever. Now, my husband and I, we did struggle at times with it, like being alone together or not. Thankfully, we never you know, really did anything too bad. Um, but again, that's where I fall back on the sacrament of confession. When you're having those struggles, when you're, you're unsure about how to act, or maybe you think you've done something that isn't leading you guys towards virtue together, Fall back on the sacrament of confession. Go get those graces because every single time you do that, that helps you take one step, you know, further in the right direction of okay, how do we lead each other to Christ? Um, it's not easy, 
It really is not easy to have to be. It's something that is worked on every single day when you're in a relationship, and it's something that you guys need to discuss every single day. And make sure, that, again, we talk about setting boundaries, setting standards. Make sure that those are in place and that you stick to them. And every time you do, again, we'll kind of think like Lent, every time you have that little bit of a self-denial, every time you follow through on that sacrifice that you said you were gonna you know, stick to, you get more graces, you get that fortitude, you get that, that courage to keep going, even when it's tough. Um, so yeah, chastity is definitely something that's difficult, but it's not impossible. And it really is a beautiful gift that we have. Um, so again, as you're looking for someone to spend your life with, bring these topics up. You know, discuss them in that link and know where you guys stand on these topics. Thank you. Great question. Hope that helps answer. Anybody else? When are you guys getting confirmed? When is your confirmation date? May 26th. May 26th. Oh, hopefully it'll be nice and warm. Is any of the classes going to be to go over? Or? I think it was great. Does anybody have anything that they can think of that they want? How, I mean, so you found your spouse in college, mm -hmm. and um, so, you know, I know you were praying about it, and you were asking the Holy Spirit to direct you to the right person, and so how, where, you know, how did that come about? Sure. Because it's, uh, you know, it, it's hard to find that right person. Yeah. And there's a lot of not right people. Absolutely. So, <laughs> fun story. <laughs> So I had originally met my husband like a week into college. So I, for reference, Chris, I was an athlete, I was a business major. When you go to Catholic University, for some reason, there's just a lot of musicians everywhere. Okay, they're, they're just, they all know everything about everything. And I was at lunch one day, and I'm sitting down with two musician friends, and they're discussing some dead composer, and I'm like, that's cool, but like, I'm really checked out. And in walks my, you know, future husband, who I had never met. And he sits down and he just joins around the conversation. And I was like, another one, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. And I'm pretty sure I got the left. That was my first meeting with my husband, the very beginning of freshman year. Fast forward, right, through a couple, you know, dates that I'd gone on, for relationships. My husband had dated some people in college too, great. Right? Fast forward to me, sitting there crying with my mom, and then praying to Jesus and saying, it's all you. You know, literally, Jesus take the wheel. So then, you know, we, like, we, we've been acquaintances. we you know, seen each other before. We, you know, every time we had dinner, or like, so I played softball, he played baseball in high school, we played playing out game catch every now and then, right? That's about it. But then, you know, after I was afraid, here he comes again. And he's persistent. My husband is persistent. So he comes in and he starts chatting with me. You know, it was after Thanksgiving break. Um, actually, it was right after the baptism of Bethany's second child. Oh. I remember leaving the reception and getting a text from my husband saying, hey, are you back on campus yet? And I was like, no. And also, who's this? Because I didn't have a number yet. So he comes along. Hi. <laughs> and we start chatting some more. Turns out I didn't realize that was my roommate and I liked him. So that was a little awkward for a while. But, um, but he kept coming around. And he wanted to talk. He loved to talk. And so we just chatted about everything, you know, about where he came from, where I came from, all kinds of stuff, right? And I kept thinking to myself, okay, well, I knew this guy, and I just had this, you know, this prayer not too long ago. So maybe this is, maybe this is him, right? And, you know, I still thought maybe I was interested in a couple other people. We really wasn't, but now I really wasn't. Um, then we approached finals week. Now, I am an absolute nerd. I had my one spot on campus that I went every single day to study for finals week. I had you know, the perfect corner, my window with the plug, and my laptop, I had my highlighters, my textbooks, whatever. And here comes my now I just want to chat about it. And I was like, just not, just not now. Like, not now. Right? And then, you know, day in, day out, he keeps doing it. He keeps coming back. He keeps finding me. He keeps chatting with me. No, 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 no. Turns out, I ended up finishing my finals earlier than planned. And I was going to leave two days from Christmas break prior. Um, not, I wasn't planning that at all. And I didn't get to say goodbye to him. So my mom came and picked me up on campus and said, hey mom, there's this guy. He keeps coming around. Um, so I think I really like him. And I started talking to my mom about him. And then by the end of the conversation, I was like, you know what? Actually, I think I really like this guy. So then 
I texted him, I was like, hey, I'm so sorry, I'm leaving tonight, like, we'll, we'll talk later. So he goes home Friday night, and he, at the time, you know, we didn't all have iPhones, and um, we were chatting while he was on his way home in the car, and then I didn't hear from him for a week. I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, I finally scared him off. I didn't pay enough attention to him, he's, he's had it with me, we're done, right? So I waited about a week, and then I just texted him out of the blue, like, hey, how you doing, right? Like five minutes later, he responds like, oh my gosh, hey, how's it going? My phone ran out in minutes, do you want to Skype tonight? I was like, great, let's Skype. So then I thought to myself, okay, you know, I think I like this guy, but I need to start asking these hard questions first. So we had conversations immediately off the bat. What do you think about, you know, these fundamental issues? What do you think about abortion? What do you think about the church? What do you think about your faith? You know, we had those hard conversations early. And he was like, nope, this is what I think. And it was perfectly in line with mine. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe this, this really is the guy. And then we talked, we talked, we talked, we Skyped probably a couple times a week over the Christmas break. Um, and then we got back to campus and we went on our first date. And then, you know, the rest is pretty much history from there. But, you know, I didn't realize it right at first. I thought about it at first. I was like, maybe this is the guy that Jesus sent to me. Maybe it's not. Do I really know? Um, but it was, you know, and honestly, it was that communication that I talked about. It was talking. It was literally just sitting, you know, with each other for hours on end, finding out what we were interested in. And the beauty of it is, is we were not interested in a lot of the same things. <laughs> you know, we didn't have that connection where it was like, oh my gosh, yeah. You also like to, you know, visit all the museums in DC, you know, pick your topic, right? Um, but we had the same values. And that's what allowed us to build our relationship and keep it going. Um, and it keeps it fun, too. You know, we can learn from each other. We compliment each other, um, which has been the best part. So. It took a little while, took about a month or so for me to figure it out, but honestly, I think it was sitting down with my mom after all my finals were done, and I was like, wow, this guy's amazing. <laughs> like, he has to come from God. Like, it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, so it wasn't an immediate process, but sometimes with prayer, that's how it works. You know, you're going to get answers in, in ways that you didn't necessarily expect to get answers. So yeah, it was a fun time. We often like to say that. I just walked out of the room the first time I met him, but you know, he persisted in it all went out. <laughs> so clearly because we have these guys. But yeah. So never underestimate the power of prayer. I don't know if there's a document slot. Okay. Yeah. Can you say hi to everybody? Say hi. Can you leave? <laughs> Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.